Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So here I'm showing you my pipe and flood consistency that I'm going to be using to cover my cookies, but I don't actually go over that particular portion in this video. However, I do have a dedicated video to that in the upper right hand corner if you want to go and check it out. So I'm kind of showing you my system here for setting up my projector. This is not really a setup that I would highly recommend. I need longer cords and I honestly should just get a different type of stand for my projector. I have yet to do so because I don't actually project images that often. Now you'll notice what I did there was I actually flipped the picture on my phone or any device that you're using because I need it to be right side up when I'm actually piping this. When I first started cake and cookie decorating, I refused to use things like projectors or anything to really help me. I always wanted to do everything free-handed. But over the years, I found with my particular skill set, I really do sometimes need to use the projector, especially if I'm making multiple cookies that all need to be very uniform. You might remember in a previous video where I actually had to make a bunch of wedding favors, and if I didn't use a projector for that, I think the lettering would have been all off. So in this instance, I just wanted to make things easy on myself, and I also wanted to make sure that the whole picture would fit onto the cookie, which is exactly what your projector helps you to do. Now you can totally do this project without a projector whatsoever, but since I am using one, I am going to give you a few tips if you've never used a projector before. I once saw this commercial floating about Facebook and Instagram where they were showing a cookie projector. And one of the taglines that they used on this commercial was that they said that literally anybody, even non cookie and cake decorators could make these intricate designs no problem because they have this cookie projector to do all of the work, basically. And I'm here to kind of say that that's not entirely true. Yes, using a projector definitely makes things a lot easier, especially when it works well. Not like this here where mine runs out of batteries and I got to go and turn it on and turn it off and do all of these things. However, you do need to have some moderate piping skills. I would say like 95% of the reason you're going to have a cookie fail if you haven't decorated a lot of sugar cookies, it's usually due to the consistency of your frosting. So the consistency of my frosting here is a little bit thicker than a pipe and flood consistency, but it is not so thick that you would be able to pipe flowers with it or 3D objects. So the reason I feel like you can't just have beginner skills when you're using a projector, though for some of you beginners, this might come rather naturally for you. I'm just saying in general, I find it's because your piping bag can't sit as it normally does when you use it. For myself, I do use my piping bag at a slight angle, but sometimes your hand or other things can get in the way as you're projecting this image down onto your cookie. So some of it is a little bit of guesswork here and there and being able to drop those lines down with accuracy, which can be a little bit tricky. So in the beginning of my cookie decorating, I really liked to make sure that I was working on fully, fully dried cookies underneath because as you saw there, maybe you missed it a little bit, but I did scrape off some of that icing because I wasn't happy with the way that it was. If my cookie wasn't fully dry, this would cause indenting. So of course, you really don't have too much to hide behind either with this. So you do want to avoid as much scraping as possible, but when that cookie is drier, you're able to get a cleaner scrape off in case you make a mistake. Those are some of my thoughts on using the projector itself, but now let's actually talk about choosing the images that you're going to project, or if you're not projecting, just choosing good images for paint your own cookies. Now I've done previous videos on paint your own cookies, but I really took a different spin on it this time. These are highly, highly detailed. Now you do not have to do highly detailed ones. In fact, sometimes it's better and easier, especially for younger children, if there is less detail on this, but I really wanted to do something that was a little bit more special. Now, one thing that I was a little bit more careful about when choosing my designs was I tried to make sure that the smaller details weren't too small. When they're too small, everything starts mushing together. Even completing these faces here in black was a little bit tricky. I had to be very, very careful. Now, I could have done these in white as well, but I didn't want to put black on the actual color palette itself. So you'll notice a lot of the black details I actually just filled in with black myself. 
Now I made these particular cookie kits for really, really young children. This is why I stuck with a lot of white. Even putting the black on was a little bit of a risk because since they're going to be water activating these colors, what ends up happening sometimes is they dip their paintbrush in the water and then if it hits some of that black outlining, it can make some of the rest of the cookie black. So that was a little bit of a risk. If you're making this for very young children and you don't want anything to go black and kind of that muddy color, I would stick with white the whole way through. I just like the pop of black and I didn't want to add it to the palette itself like I mentioned earlier. What you're basically creating with these cookies is an edible coloring book. So keeping that in mind, I really made sure to look for images that were like coloring sheets. If you go for something that's a little bit more realistic, sometimes your projection can end up looking a little wonky. Realism is definitely not my strong suit, so I tend to make sure that I look for simpler images. And if I want to add in more detail after that, I find it a lot easier to base the projection off a simple image and then go ahead and add in the details later. Kind of like here where I put two different images together because I didn't like the way that the character was going to look if I did it with the other picture. And then I also go in here and I add in all the rest of my details. I find this a lot easier to do without the projector on of course because I can see things really really nice and clearly. Now with my Encanto set I wanted to add in a lot of blacks so you'll notice that I add a lot of those to the border. With the unicorns here I just want to keep things really really beautiful and light so I'm just going in with white details. You don't have to add borders or anything to your DIY cookie project but I just find it gives it a nice finished off look. So I wanted to make these Easter themed without really doing the full on Easter kind of thing. And I wanted to make sure that they were custom to each child that I made these for. So I tried to make sure that each kit included one large, large cookie egg and all the rest of them were going to be little eggs here and there. And of course, some of the cookie shapes also corresponded to the theme. For my son's little box here, I made all of these superheroes. So I wanted to make sure that I included some of those classic cartoon words as well. Not that he could read, but I'm sure he could appreciate the visuals. My daughter is super into unicorns and anything of the like, so I decided this would be a pretty safe theme to go with for her. I also made sure that each of the cookie boxes included at least one cookie that said their name and something that alluded to Easter. And I did use the exact same piping consistency for all of the lettering and for the drawings. Now here, I actually started piping out these dots, but I didn't like how they were really, really puffy. You can see how they still have the indentation on there. So instead, I didn't make any new consistency. I just waited for an hour or so until this consistency loosened up. I just didn't want to have to go and do anything differently and remake icing or add anything. Plus, I had other tasks to do so this worked out and as you can see it's not actually puffing up as much and we're not getting any of that detail kind of showing through we want these to remain relatively flat though it really doesn't matter these are just going to be the edible color palettes which again I am also trying to match to the theme of each of these boxes so what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that everything is well lined up and ready to go for airbrushing and I'm not cleaning out my airbrush that much in between I'm just kind of spraying it to the corner making Making sure that I get all of that colorant out. Now there are multiple ways that you can include colorant for your DIY kits. I decided to go with an edible palette. It's actually not the best option I find, especially if you are giving this to younger children, because of course the palette can become waterlogged as they are dipping the paintbrush in water and then going to the cookie. My older children, when they're doing this, they were a little bit better with it, but my younger kids, yeah, the cookie definitely became waterlogged. There's also the option of just buying the paint palettes already ready and they come in pieces of paper. They're little strips. They're relatively inexpensive and generally you can get those and the mini paintbrushes as a deal. And these are the mini paintbrushes here. It's relatively cheap. Now, if you do want to utilize my method, but you don't have an airbrush machine, you can paint this on as well, just using whatever edible food gel that you're using mixed with a little bit of vodka and then putting it on. If you don't want to use vodka, you can also use something like clear lemon extract. Now I provided a lot of cookies per kit and quite honestly, these palettes were not big enough to make sure that all of the cookies were colored. So I would actually include a, probably about two or three palettes with this amount of cookies. But again, it's a trial and error thing. So if you are going to be selling these, you want to make sure that you definitely do a test run with your kits. 
Now I'm going to give you some pricing tips for this rather than me giving you the directive price that I would give. Now, even though these are DIY cookie kits, which would differ usually from a custom order, because these particular ones are so highly detailed, I would treat it just like a custom order. So basically it would probably be around the same pricing as if I actually filled in the whole cookie. Remember, you're putting in extra work to actually create the paint palettes, the boxing for this, as well as providing that paintbrush. And this is an activity on top of the labor that you put into it. So make sure that you price accordingly. I gifted these boxes to my friend's children, as well as my nieces and nephews, and of course my daughter and son. So this little guy here is probably the youngest to actually receive a cookie kit, but I was pretty impressed that he was able to get the idea fairly down. And both my niece and nephew love Mickey and Minnie Mouse, so I decided to go with that theme for them. Yeah! Good job! Like green. Yeah! Start the red. I tell Daddy who seen a cookie. And two gambling. Ready for the color? Tyler. As I've mentioned previously, these are water activated palettes that you have created. So what you do is you dip it into the water gently and then you place it into the colorant and then you can go ahead and paint. Now this really doesn't take too long to dry at all. If you want to speed it up, you could place it in the dehydrator, but of course you could just leave it out, which I'm sure most people would do. And it's pretty much ready to eat instantly. Now let's get to the subscriber submission of the video. This one is coming at you from at the dot sugar bunny. And I love the colors on here and the addition of those blackberries. And please, if you want to be the next featured subscriber of the video, then follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!